Meu irmão, saudamos a todos. 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 Meu irmão, And verse 14. Diz assim a do nosso Deus. Thus says the word of our God. Jó 14, Job 14, from verse 7. Porque for there is hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again, and its tender shoots will not cease, though its root may grow old in the earth, and its stump may die in the ground, yet at the scent of water, It will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my hard service I will wait till my change comes. Lord, we praise you. We're thankful for the moments that we have already had of fellowship with you for your precious blood of Jesus, we ask that through your word may bless your people, we pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen, brethren. The text begins saying that there is hope for the tree that if it is cut, will still renew itself, it will never cease its renewal. We see and we know that every tree has a role a few to produce shade, other to produce the wood for manufacturing of uh, furniture and other utensils, other that produce fruit so that we can feed, and others that if there was no other function that would have already a radio function, which is to extract the carbon gas and through the photosynthesis produce oxygen uh, through the sunlight. So we see that the tree is very important. It has its importance. And here it shows a tree that was uh, in a certain place, in a certain environment, and this tree perform in, in that, that place, in that in environment, a, a role. Those are the ones that I just mentioned earlier. It just They are just an example. But this tree had a, a role where it was where it was born, where, where it grew, where it flourished. And the word says that this tree was cut down. So it was eliminated by someone that thought that maybe uh, it would have no purpose or that you would be useless on the place where it was sown or was planted. So when, when we see that once it was cut down, the, the trunk of the tree was never used. None of it was utilized. It was like, I like to repeat once again so that Brandon can understand, a, a tree that had no purpose had no use, was a useless tree, had no use. And because of this, the Bible says that it was cut down and left there. And the word says that this tree, it grows older on the land and its trunk, its trunk died on the dust. So we see that when this tree was cut down, The Bible says, and it's written like this, if the if the root grows older, and the, the root speaks about the base of the tree, it speaks about foundation. The root speaks about the place where the tree uh, grab onto so that you would not fall with strong winds or storms and the adversities. So the, the trunk fell down, which is the body. The body of the tree fell down. Fell down. And the root 
grows older on the, on the ground. <coughs> so whoever looks at this tree, they, they think this tree is useless, has no, no purpose, and the, the roots are, are, has, have grown dry and old, so it's dead on the dust. And here it speaks of two things. <coughs> so you got a tree that grows older on the, on the dirt. It speaks about our own humanity. It speaks of the, the dust and dust. It speaks about human reason. <coughs> what comes from, from the clay of our understanding or of our own knowledge, what we think. And it also says that when the tree is cut down, it goes through this process. <coughs> the trunk and the base, the base, what caused it to remain standing grows older. And if you bring this information to the life of man, many times like this, sometimes we are in a determined place and a location, and people look at us and they think, oh, this person has no purpose. This person is useless. So then we are eliminated. <coughs> and then after this elimination, this cut that takes place where we fall down, the doctrine, the plan, the project of God in our lives, because of that situ situation that took place in a certain moment in our lives, what happens? It grows older. It ages on the dirt because our reason, our human understanding, ends up causing that plan and project that God had for our lives also to grow older, to get old. Time passed by and we remain in that situation. The body, the word says, the church is also the body of Christ. And here he's speaking of, about a tree trunk falls down to the dust and it speaks many times about the spiritual life, our life, the church or the servant of God that are in a location that is part of the body but they are on the dust. They are in difficulty, they are on struggle, they are human reason and according to their own understanding. And we look like this and we think, oh, there's no solution. But here, the servant Job, he had observed how nature was, how things worked. <coughs> and he knew that even if a tree had been cut down, even if the roots would look that it was growing older, and even if it, it, the trunk would uh, wither and die on the dust, there was still hope for that tree. That's why the text begins saying there is still hope. There is hope. And many times, everything that is left for the servant of God, for man, <coughs> for the woman, that has gone through uh, a problem for a specific difficulty, they were cut down, they were eliminated, they have been rejected. A person that has been going through for a long time for through a process like this, and that people look at them and say, there's no solution. But Job, he knew that there was still hope. And my brother and sister, there is still hope. In the same way there is hope for the tree, and men man also typifies a tree when Jesus comes to man he, the first time that he prays with laying of hands on the town and he asks uh, to a uh, blind man what do you see? I see people like trunks of trees and it is related to us we are trees there may be like the tree that withered that died spiritually but there is 
There's still hope for us. There is still hope for you, my brother and sister, who are participating with us on the service. There is hope. And what hope is this? The Bible says that Christ in us hope for the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So then Job, he had this hope. He was expecting this. To know that in a certain moment, something could happen and could change completely the situation of that tree that was there with the body falling down and with the roots withered. So he said, if, the, if I die on the sand, when the water arrive, so he sees that after the, just before the, the rain comes, with the smell of the, the rain, just by no, noticing the proximity of the rains, and if you are from the from, have grown up in a farm like me, you know the smell of water. If you are in a place where it is dry and it's about to rain, you you breathe and you feel like the rain is coming. In the northeast, is very common, especially in the period of drought, which is very common in the northeast of Brazil. People from the northeast of Brazil, they know, they notice this kind of stuff. There is even uh, a song in, uh, in Brazil, in that region, that says, if it rains, we everything will produce fruit. So when we notice the presence of the rain, the tree begins to sprout. It begins to produce branches. So it begins to live again. And the word of the Lord says the following, that whoever is in Christ is a new creation. Everything has become new. And he comes to Nicodemus and says, it is necessary for you to be born again of the water and of the Spirit. So the smell of the water is the presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of the servant. That many times, even they may even think that they are dead spiritually. A servant that has grown, has gotten older spiritually, that they are not performing any role in the house of the Lord. They are not seeking the Lord. They are entering into a spiritual difficulty. And it was not because of them. It was because they have been cut down. Because in a certain moment in their walk, somebody may have said a word that may have caused a great harm to their life. But here the word of the Lord said the following, to the smell of the waters. From the moment that he realizes that the tree realizes that this cycle is going to stop existing, is going to be eliminated. Those years of drought, of being dry, without feeling the presence of God, without feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit, this period is going to pass. In a certain moment, the waters are going to come upon this, this tree. So then, it will bring the tree who bring life again, fruits, benefits, who cause it to flourish once again. It will grow again. It will get up once again. The, church, the, the tree is reborn again with the smell of waters. When we speak about the smell, we speak about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When Paul says the good smell of Christ, when we notice the good smell of Christ in, in the environment, which is the presence of the Holy Spirit, because why? Because the tree, the tree has life once again, and man gets life once again. And the servant called Job, he noticed it on the on nature. He noticed that the, the water would bring to the tree that was cut down. It brings this benefit, and he wanted also that this benefit that was caused by the rain and the water upon the tree would also come upon the life of every man. And now he asks a question. If I die now, will I re 
resurrect again. And this question was took a long time to be answered. But the servant of God says, every day of my combat, I would wait until my my change would come. So he had a question. He wanted to know if I die, will I re resurrect or turn alive again? And for, for every day I will go on a combat. I will wait because for Job there was hope. That's why he says, this is my witness in heaven and my creditor in heaven. And know that my Redeemer lives and at the end he will come upon the earth. So the desire of Job and the fight of Job was it was to remain waiting. And the Bible says, I waited patiently on the Lord, and he inclined his ear and I heard my plea. And hope is exactly this, is to wait patiently. There was a hope. And hope is that one day when man dies, he can resurrect again. He would have life once again. And then Jesus says that he is the fount of living waters. And the Holy Spirit is this water that was that was, came out of, of the cross. Blood and water came out from the side of his body, which is the Holy Spirit that gives life to men, that renews men, that puts men once again standing, that resurrects men, resurrects the life of men, the family of men, and the faith of men. This is the Spirit that was given by the precious blood of Jesus by the Father. So, when man died, uh, will he resurrect again? And he waited, and that hope, his wait that uh, he uh, made was not in vain. He was able to receive an answer that one day he asked, can man die once again, be alive again? And he fought until the the change would take place upon him. So we see it in the case of Job. Job, in the New Testament, when Jesus answered the, the question of Job, if I die, will I be alive again? And Jesus says, I'm resurrection and life. And whoever is dead, even if he's dead, he will live again. So then he, Jesus says, do you believe in this? Do you believe in this? Do you have hope in this? Do you believe that I have power to resurrect the dead? So then he came and spoke to Lazarus. Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus resurrected on that day. And the Lord, today the Lord wants to do the same. He wants to bring out us out. He wants us to feel the smell of the waters. The presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, in your home, in your house, wherever you are. Because the Lord wants to renew you. The Lord wants to put you back standing. The Lord wants to resurrect your spiritual life, your physical life, your family, your businesses, your faith, and your conviction and assurance that God is powerful to act in our lives on our behalf and to our benefit. When the water came upon the nature, upon the trees that have been fallen and they have been cut down, the trees would receive life once again. And that's the desire of the Lord for us tonight. The, the waters of the Spirit may once again restore our lives, causing us to once again grow and flourish and produce branches, like it's written in the Word of God. Because that was the role of that tree. My brother and sister, we have a role in the house of God. We have a uh, role in the project of God. When Jesus came to his disciples, he said, go and produce fruit, and may your fruits remain. We have been called to produce this fruit. And this fruit will come upon us when we feel the presence of God in our lives. The smell of the waters will come out. And that's the desire of the Lord for you, for me, for each one of us, that we may sprout and that we may grow and that we may flourish, that we produce fruits 
and that our fruit may remain. The tree, one day, it was it suffered an intervention. intervention. Many Christians, many servants of God, through on their spiritual walk, may have suffered some sort of intervention. But Paul says, I fought the good battle, finished my race, and kept the faith. And Job in the past, he said, every day of my combat, I will wait until my change will come. My brethren, we are here to, to fight. We are the good soldiers of Christ. We cannot go back when we face with the trials and adversities. If we fall, the Lord will put us back again, back up again, because the Lord has power to put us back standing. If you died on the ground, if the root has grown, has withered, it may have withered, but it is not rotten. The foundation, which is the Word of God, is, is founded, is, has root in the life of the servant of God. It may, may grow older, but it will not rotten. Time may pass, but you will remain there. And the Bible says that heaven may pass, the earth may pass, but the word of God will never pass. The promise that God made for your life, for my life, for our lives, will never pass. You may have grown older, but there will come a day and a determined moment where the smell of the waters, when we notice the smell of the waters, before the blessing comes, we are already glorifying the Lord. We are giving glory to God. Why is that? Because we are feeling the presence, we are feeling that the blessing of God has come upon our lives. It is coming. We are feeling that the Lord will be putting us standing once again, causing us to grow in His presence, causing us to have a new life, because that's the desire of the Lord, that whoever is in Christ is a new creature in God. Everything has been made new. That's why the, the tree is, sprouts and produces fruit. And that's the desire of the Lord for mine, for yours, for our lives. We see on those texts that in the same way that God acts on nature, in generally speaking, He also acts on the life of the Christian, on the light of the servant of God, in our lives, spiritual lives. When we feel the presence of, of the Lord, everything in our lives change. The servant in the past, the prodigal son, he was far away, he was distant, he got out of the house of the father, he was dead, and he said, this son that was dead is now alive. He was lost and now has been found. When we come close to the Lord, when we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we begin we pass from death to life. And that's what happened with Lazarus. And that's what the Lord wants to do with each one of us. Because there is hope. My brother, my sister, whatever the problem you may be going through. Job here went through several problems, through many adversities. But there was still hope. Because there is still hope for the tree that has been cut down. For you, my brother and sister. For each one of us may have, be may have been cut down, but it will renew again. If you're dead, the Lord will resurrect you. One, blessed be the name of the Lord, because the Lord has power and authority for this. Amen. Let's sing a song, and then afterwards we're going to bring the service to <coughs> Jesus is 
aleluia. Glória a Deus. 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 Today is the day that the Lord has set aside so that you can feel the smell, the smell of these purifying waters, the smell of Christ. And tonight, He wants to act on your behalf, to your benefit. He wants to resurrect you. He wants to change you. He wants to transform you. Make out of each one of us he wants to hear a prayer, a glorification, and he wants to make you into a new creature. Today, he's calling you so that we can produce new fruits and that those fruits may remain in his presence. The Lord today, once again, wants to bless you. Bless your home. Bless your house. Bless your family. He wants to add faith to you that one day, he has withered in our lives. Whoever can may stand up. We have a couple of pastors with us. I'd like to ask one of the pastors to pray with laying of hands, praying for the entire congregation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord God, at this moment, 
we raise a plea on behalf of your church, our servants that have watched the service, your word, the songs that have been sang. We ask, Lord God, that you may renew. Lord God, our will, our willingness, our definition in you, Lord. Don't allow, Lord, uh, us to may ever make a mistake, but we may always look to the target so that we can always look to the eternity that is awaits us. Give us a blessing, Lord, and that your spirit may find a place in each heart and maybe operating life, life and peace that we can only find in Jesus. Give a blessing, Lord, from the smallest to the greatest, to the weakest, to the ones that feel like they're strengthened in the Lord. May your spirit put a stamp on each one of us. Is the prayer that we say, I'm really thankful in the name of Jesus. Amen. We say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, love of God, our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, Brandon. Our service is over. Now the word is with Pastor Ronildo. Amen, my brethren. To all the peace of the Lord. Whoever wants. Pai, Senhor, irmãos. Pai, Senhor, irmãos. Márcia. Pai, Senhor, Marius Leme. Pai, Senhor, 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 Pai, Senhor,